portion uh, uh, so these portions essentially what they do is these portions they uh, the, the portions they are uh, underlined and you have to read those parts I mean you can read the whole thing but for uh, examination purpose uh, that part is absolutely essential so uh, from your the feedback which I received from all of you about endoplasmic reticulum is that endoplasmic reticulum it is a part of the cell it is uh, a membrane bound structure inside the cell in the cytoplasm then I have uh, received a f uh, feedback about its function that it is a site for protein synthesis and to that I have added that uh, actually uh, it also helps in the proper folding of the proteins so th this is uh, the f uh, these are some of the features about endoplasmic reticulum which we have studied so let us uh, now go and uh, see uh, more in details about this endoplasmic reticulum I am sharing my screen So is my uh, screen visible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, if you sir. have a question, please uh, you can interrupt me and try to make this more interactive. You know, uh, you keep on asking questions, uh, what you want, what you could not understand. We must talk. And, uh, otherwise, what it becomes is it becomes a one side conversation. I, I keep on talking and then uh, end and then some of you fall asleep and all these things happen so uh, you can uh, keep on interrupting me if you have heard about something new you can just say that i have heard about all these things so you can ask questions uh, try to make it interactive so uh, according to the definition from wikipedia uh, uh, it uh, the endoplasmic reticulum it is a continuous membrane system that forms a series of flattened sacs within the cytoplasm of eukaryotic cells and serves multiple functions being important particularly in the synthesis folding modification and transport of proteins so it is a continuous membrane sy system so uh, you have a plasma membrane from the nucleus that extends continuously into these sac like structures which you are seeing into these sac like structures it's moving uh, the, the, this sac like structures so the, this is the sa endoplasmic reticulum so th you see the this part this is the se section of the nucleus and these are the nuclear pore this is the nucleus covering from here the endoplasmic reticulum you're looking at it in a three dimensional view so what you see over here is uh, finger like uh, projections you can see a sac finger like sac like projections and they are known as cisternae and the space in between it is known as the cisternal space and on top of the these things you see these little violet dots these violet dots are ribosomes ribosomes are where p uh, which help in the synthesis of proteins so it's the machinery which synthesizes proteins from rna so ribosomes synthesize proteins from RNA and the endoplasmic reticulum is the site on which certain proteins are being synthesized. You have two essentially two types of uh, 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 endoplasmic reticulums. The first is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the second is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You see the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The smooth uh, endoplasmic reticulum. On the top of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, you see lots of ribosomes being attached. On the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, you don't see them. So you must practice this image. So I have highlighted the place from this book which you have to, uh, the diagrams which you need to practice and the places which you must read. You can, you have to, you can read the other part for extra knowledge, but the, the, this part is an absolute essential for your studies. So 
the endoplasmic reticulum is the endoplasmic reticulum this part is divided into two sub uh, compartments the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so both types of endoplasmic reticulum uh, comprise a system of membranes that enclose a space or lumen that lumen or space that is separated from the surrounding cytosol so outside is the cytoplasm and so inside is the space or lumen the cisternal space is the lumen the rough endoplasmic reticulum is defined by the presence of ribosomes bound uh, or to its cytosolic surface so this side outside this is facing the cytosol and that is known as the cytosolic surface so it has got lots of ribosomes attached to that region and it is associated therefore this rough endoplasmic reticulum is associated uh, with ribosomes the rer is typically composed of a network of flattened sacs so these are the network of flattened sacs which you see flattened sac bosta flattened sac like structures and it is known as cisternae the rough endoplasmic reticulum is continuous with the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope which also bears ribosome on its cytosolic surface okay different cells contain markedly different ratios of the two types of endoplasmic reticulum depending on the activities of the cell for example cells let's increase the size for example cells that secrete large amounts of proteins such as cells of pancreas or salivary glands have extensive regions of rough endoplasmic reticulum now we go, go let us uh, study what about the sm smooth endoplasmic reticulum the smooth endoplasmic reticulum it is extensively developed in a number of cell types example you find them a lot in the skeletal muscles in kidney tubules and in steroid producing endocrine glands so what are endocrine glands endocrine glands they don't have any ducts endocrine glands like your thyroid gland Uh, your uh, pa pancreatic uh, islets of Langerhans, your adrenal gland, pituitary glands—they don't have any duct or pipe through which hormones are secreted. So, in these cells, uh, you have you find lots of this smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So, function of so smooth endoplasm—you know, rough endoplasmic reticulum, site of protein synthesis, absolutely clear. Now, now, what are the what is the function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum? it's the synthesis of steroid hormones in the endocrine cells of the gonad and adrenal cortex so these are sites where steroid hormones are synthesized in this smooth endoplasmic reticulum another function is in the liver it helps in detoxification of compounds barbiturates and ethanol so whose chronic use can lead to proliferation of the smooth endoplasmic uh, reticulum in liver so the detoxification if you take any drugs or if you take alcohol or drugs like barbiturates uh, immediately they, they are very toxic uh, to the uh, body so uh, this uh, the liver secretes enzymes uh, known as uh, oxygenases or cytochrome p450 they detoxify these uh, particular products which you take the alcohol or uh, drugs which you take they are detoxified so that it is less harmful for the body 
so if you keep on drinking and drinking then you have your liver gets destroyed why because you suddenly in people who drink a lot they need lot of these uh, detoxifying enzymes and so what happens uh, their liver starts to work a lot and uh, for working you have lots of uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum in them because uh, this is a one of the functions detoxification takes place here and the third function especially in muscles muscle contraction which you will read in physiology it is sequestering calcium ions so it is important in uh, gathering calcium ions and this calcium is uh, plays a very important uh, regulated release of calcium uh, from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum of skeletal and cardiac uh, cardiac muscle cells it results in muscle contraction this calcium binds to a protein uh, uh, that is the uh, protein which you will uh, study a lot troponin and this uh, calcium troponin complex it causes it uh, it helps in the contraction of uh, muscle there is a molecular mechanism of muscle contraction so in this semester you don't need to go into details of this but this calcium uh, suddenly you need a large trigger of calcium and this large trigger of calcium suddenly the sarcoplasmic reticulum they sequ sequester this large amount of calcium when the contraction is done this calcium again gets back into this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, cell uh, endoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum so have a look at this picture these are the cisterne which you see you see uh, ribosomes these black dots on the top they are dotted we are or black dots are dotted over all over and these are sites of ribosome synthesis and this pink flesh colored region it is the cytosol just a block from a cell if you take out and if you see the electron micrograph you see these structures it's drawn from these structures gradually you can see you can see the cisternal space over here and you can see these ribosomes are attached on top of this rough endoplasmic reticulum this is another structure it's showing the ribosomes attached on the rough endoplasmic reticulum so the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the starting point of the biosynthetic pathway it is the site of synthesis of proteins carbohydrate chains and phospholipids that journey through the membranous compartment of the cell so these are membranous compartments so it is the starting point of the synthesis so polypeptides are synthesized at two distinct locations within the cell you, you know that certain uh, polypeptides they are uh, especially the let's increase the size especially the secreted proteins proteins which are attached with the membranes or the integral membrane proteins soluble proteins that reside within the compartments of the endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes endosomes vesicles and plant vacuoles they these are the proteins which are synthesized on the rough endoplasmic reticulum ribosome complex so these ribosomes there are one set of ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum and there are other uh, which are ribosomes which are free ribosomes that are cytosol in the cytosol they they don't synthesize proteins on the endoplasmic reticulum they synthesize proteins freely in the cytosol 
so who are these proteins they are directly released into the cytoplasm who are these proteins they are uh, proteins which remain in the cytoplasm example the enzymes of the biosynthetic pathway called glycolysis and cytoskeletal pro uh, proteins peripheral proteins of the cytosolic surface of the membrane such as pectins and ankyrins there are proteins which are going to be incorporated into peroxisomes chloroplast and mitochondria these are the proteins which are synthesized uh, by the free ribosomes and ribosomes uh, from the the, the uh, from the rough endoplasmic reticulum they synthesize secreted proteins integral membrane proteins which those who need very precise folding so uh, let us now talk uh, uh, come into the details about how it is gunther blobel a german scientist i met gunther blobel when uh, during my days in uh, germany he came to our institute gunther blobel he won the nobel prize along with his uh, 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 friend uh, david sabatini and bernard doberstein of rockefeller university they first proposed a signal sequence hypothesis so what the, their hypothesis suggests is that the site of synthesis of a protein was determined by the sequence of amino acid in the n terminal portion of the polypeptide so when a uh, polypeptide is being produced from by translation from a messenger rna on the ribosome the n terminal side of a protein that is the, there is a n terminal side amino end and there is a c terminal end of a protein so the n terminal side of the protein is first synthesized we will read them in molecular biology the process of transcription translation possibly i am i will be the criminal who is going to teach you all these things so uh, what happens is that the n terminal portions of the polypeptide are the first which come out from these ribosomes when they are synthesized and they contain a sequence a small the protein sequence known as signal sequence a sequence of amino acids many amino acids together join together they form a, pro a polypeptide or protein so this form a small sequence known as a signal sequence and once this particular signal sequence comes out it this signal sequence tells okay protein now i have to go to the ribosome uh, to the rough endoplasmic reticulum so the signal is a signal okay now this protein is destined for rough endoplasmic reticulum otherwise uh, it it will be in the cytoplasm so this signal hypothesis it was given by gunther blobel this is known as the signal hypothesis so let us go uh, go into details on what this signal hypothesis is so this is the signal hypothesis all this written read all these things so uh, what happens is this is the messenger rna on which this green uh, the yellow color on which there is this green colored ribosomes and this is the transfer rna which brings amino acids to the ribosomes and this protein is being synthesized this is the protein which is being synthesized over here and Uh, this there this red colored uh, you have the red colored signal se sequence pro produced and now the there is a protein known as when the cytosol known as srp signal recognition peptide or signal recognition protein this recognizes this signal sequence it by, by, by this uh, then it goes and binds to the ribosome and it brings the ribosome in the uh, to the srp re uh, uh, receptor and this is on the top of the endoplasmic reticulum so the signal srp srp then binds uh, to the signal and then the srp then brings it to the srp receptor which is present on top of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and in this rough endoplasmic reticulum then the rest of the protein synthesis they take place inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and there are chaperones known as bip and other chaperones which are responsible for this particular action so this is the signal hypothesis i would uh, i would expect a five marks question coming out from here
so we have studied about all these things now let us go what what type of protein processing takes place I have underlined the portions which you need to study. Let's go to this picture. I need to reduce the size of it so that the whole picture can come. We will go from step 1 to step 2. There is a molecule on the membrane of uh, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, this cross line which you see that that is known as dolicol phosphate that is dolicol phosphate you have dolicol phosphate over there so to this uh, this dolicol binds and you have this dolicol phosphate being formed now CTP cytidine triphosphate hydrol this is takes place now this to this two molecules of UDP now let us uh, UDP uh, glucose so uh, N acetyl glucose I mean you see this particular color over here let us draw this arrow it has gone this orange color it means a molecule of N acetyl let us increase the size over let us uh, increase the size from here you see a molecule UDP N acetyl glucosamine this is nothing but a uh, uh, NAG or in the on the bacterial membranes this NAG NAM complex this N acetyl glucosamine is attached this is a carbohydrate molecule it is attached to this UDP two molecules so one UDP comes out, one UMP comes out and this particular compound forms this dolicol pyrophos 2 phosphates, diphosphate and two molecules of N acetyl glucosamine are attached. The now follow the sequence of uh, biochemical reactions which are taking place. First this compound known as uh, NAG comes at two with two molecules UDP NAG comes out and uh, it attaches its to N acetyl glucosamine to this particular dolicol phosphate pyro and forms this particular compound. Next step see this blue triangle is a is nothing but it is a mannose. Five st uh, five steps take place for for five takes place one after the other consecutively. So 5 GDP uh, mannose GDP is at attached to this mannose they are hydrolyzed and it forms 5 GDP uh, 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 molecules come and this is attached to this particular dolicol phosphate to uh, N acetyl glucosamine and these mannose residues then there are enzymes known as flippase, uh, floppase, flippase. What it does is it inverts it and so this uh, sugar end it goes in the goes faces inside. Right. It faces inside. Now this particular carbohydrate is uh, synthesized. It faces inside. In the next step what happens is more mannose residues from uh, are attached in the fifth step what happens 4 GDP mannose it forms up the attaches to a dolicol and this empty one is attached like this to this it, it attaches and it transfers more mannose molecules to this so more mannose 5 mannose was added to that another 4 uh, mannose molecules this blue are they are added another four so total you have nine mannose added now what is the red one red is a glucose molecule 
you have to know uh, all the steps one by one so it's a huge step but this is a very simple figure try to follow this figure all the names of the enzymes at this moment don't bother about the, with the names of the enzymes follow what are the steps which take place okay so such a huge molecule is formed now a dolicol with a glucose the sixth step is uh, uh, done now let us go to the seventh step one empty dolicol phosphate from three uh, three glucose three udp glucose molecules three udp glucose molecules they attach three dolicol this glucose then in this ninth step three more glucose this whole reaction takes place and addition three more glucose molecules are being added so 2n acetyl glucosamine added to that is added nine mo uh, molecules of mannose 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and to that three molecules of glucose they are added in the step and now this whole carbohydrate unit which has been formed n acetyl glucosamine mannose it is transferred to this is the protein which is being formed in the ribosome the protein which is being formed in the ribosome so to a asn residue asn is an amino acid residue it is transferred so this this protein becomes glycosylated or a carbohydrate residue is attached to the amino acid it becomes a glycoprotein glyco means for carbohydrate being attached it becomes a glycoprotein and this is uh, this empty dolicol phosphate is released out so this cycle keeps on occurring i hope i am clear uh, do you have any questions in this part if there is please uh, tell me i i can clear it once more বুঝতে পেরেছ এই জায়গাটা হ্যালো ওকে ওকে সো দিস ইজ হোয়াট হ্যাপেন্স হাউ দ্য ফোল্ডিং টেক্স প্লেস দেখি কেউ সামবডি হ্যাজ এন্টার্ড আর ওয়াট আই লেটস চেক ওয়ান্স নো বডি হ্যাজ চেকড আই এন্টার্ড so this part you have to read the steps then there is a th the quality of protein which is being folded there is a quality control so the proteins which are synthesized their quality is assessed whether they are folded properly or not if they are not folded properly then what then the uh, the protein may not work properly it is good for nothing so there is a qu bad quality proteins are removed and good quality proteins are kept so there is a quality control which takes place so this is the quality control which takes place in the step 1 this uh, this protein unfolded protein this is the unfolded protein which you have to which this huge more carbohydrate residues to which you have three glucose residues are added right this has been transferred with the dolicol so this is in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen so there are enzymes known as glucosidase 1 and 2 what they do they try to fold this protein and it comes to calnexin where where, where the next round two glucoses are removed here glucose uh, glucosidase what it does it removes this glucose you have one glucose removed and then it comes over here then it comes to the next step if the folding is correctly done if it is correctly done it is it goes to the next step towards golgi complex if it is not correctly folded again all these glucose is uh, added to this a molecule of glucose is added with this gt enzyme look like glucose transferase enzyme it adds one more molecule of glucose again so this cycle is repeated till the protein is correctly folded if the protein is not correctly folded if it if an abnormal shape takes place and this is determined by these uh, as carbohydrate residues because of their shape 
if uh, if it is not correctly folded uh, repeatedly there is some mutation it goes to the proteasome for degradation it is destroyed new fresh protein only corrected folded proteins are released so this uh, ensures that these proteins are properly folded so under certain uh, circumstances misfolded proteins can be generated in the endoplasmic reticulum at a rate faster than they can be exported to the cytoplasm the accumulation of misfolded proteins is potentially lethal to the cell and it triggers a comprehensive plan of action within the cell and it is known as the unfolded protein response of upr so suddenly if the temperature of the surrounding increases the proteins which are being synthesized inside the cell they start to denature and misfold properly it is supposed to be this is supposed to attach to this instead of this supposed uh, being attached to this this attaches separately like this so this way the protein will not work it has to uh, fold properly for its function in order to work so this endoplasmic reticulum it contains certain protein sensors that monitor the concentration of unfolded or misfolded proteins in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen especially one important uh, protein is the molecular chaperon known as bip bip so now let us see what happens this is inside the endoplasmic reticulum this region it is inside the endoplasmic reticulum and this is outside the red endoplasmic reticulum so inside the cell uh, this misfolded proteins this chaperon called bip binds so normally they are inactive these are uh, this bip binds to these inactive uh, when when everything is going perfectly the, there is no disturbances bip is bound to these sensors these violet color molecules they are the sensors to the sensors bip is bound they are inactive so when the protein starts uh, misfolding this bip goes and binds to these proteins what happens as a result of this uh, uh, bip going and binding to all these molecules misfolded protein is that this becomes free and they come and they bind with each other once they bind with each other they become active the sensors they become active and immediately they uh, what it does is uh, it uh, stimul phosphorylates translation factor during translation there is a factor known as uh, eukaryotic initiation factor 2 alpha this is becomes active it activates this protein it phosphorylates this protein that is it attaches a phosphate group so the when the sensor is activated because bip has been released bip is with the misfolded proteins result is now what happens when there is a uh, uh, unfolded protein stop no more protein now now the condition is unfavorable now don't say, uh, uh, translate any more proteins stop translation because uh, if the temperature is high now whatever i will translate now the proteins uh, the proteins will not fold properly so just stop translation at that time so this is the idea idea uh, behind the whole system the to stop translation when the uh, protein is uh, when there is a misfolded proteins coming and so when misfolded proteins come this bip comes and binds to these regions and when bip binds to this the, the, the this bit these uh, these tyrosine kinase sensors they become free and they bind with each other when two, uh, two brothers they meet they become active one brother alone is inactive second brother alone is inactive when the two brothers come together they start uh, they become active and they phosphorylate translation factor ei2 alpha and that becomes phosphorylated and then a sequence of events take place which will eventually 
stop the translation to take place this is uh, this uh, this is what mm, I, I will stop translation or they will uh, make the translation of proteins which are capable of elevating endoplasmic reticulum stress so either it will stop translation or it will produce more proteins which will stop the stress of the endoplasmic reticulum so this is the unfolded protein response now these proteins once they process with uh, processed uh, these processing has been taken place they now move towards the golgi complex in the next class we will discuss about what happens in the golgi complex so the with this i end today's class and uh, uh, do you people have got some questions no sir don't have questions so i have taken your attendance everything is fine looks good sir ha huh? sir you said you we have made guten global sir what did i say ki bolechi bangla bolo sir guten global bole kar sange ki bhabe guntar global guntar global ha amader dekha kori amader ei still institute e এই সিগন্যাল হাইপোথিসিসটা দিয়েছিল যখন পিএইচডি সময় তখন ও এসেছিল একটা টক দিতে এসেছিল ওকে দেখেছি তারপরে যে ইলেকট্রন ট্রান্সপোর্ট চেনের যে যে লোকটা যে ছিল সেও তা তাকেও দেখেছি তবে গুন্থার গ্লোবাল আমাদের ওই ফ্র্যাঙ্কফার্টেতেই কাজ করতো প্রথম দিকে বলো কো এনি মোর কোয়েশ্চেন্স अच्छा क्वेश्चन आरो एनी मोर क्वेश्चन किसी के पास क्वेश्चन है क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन है इंग्लिश में ही बोलने का जो है वो नहीं है तुम कुछ भी लैंग्वेज में बोल सकते हो सो नो क्वेश्चंस देन ओके सर हां बोलो बोलो अच्छा जोकन लीवर जोकन एसीआर एर क्वालिफिकेशन है तो ओटा कोनो साइड इफेक्ट আছে প্রচুর আছে সাইড এফেক্ট তো হবেই তোমার আস্তে আস্তে সেলটা নষ্ট হয়ে যায় তো ওভারওয়ার্ক করতে করতে মরে যায় সাইড এফেক্ট তো হয় ফাইব্রোসিস সিস্টিক ফাইব্রোসিস হয় লিভার পচে যায় মানে ওটা শুধু এসিআর এর জন্যই হয় না অন্য কোনো ফ্যাক্টর আছে ওই অন্য ফ্যাক্টরও আছে ওটাও ওয়ান অফ দা থিংস মানে এটা হচ্ছে যে যারা ইয়ে করে লিভারের মধ্যে আগেই যে সব লিভারের সেলে দেখবে ওই এসিআর এর নাম্বারস বেড়ে যায় তাদের ওষুধ টষুধ খাচ্ছে এই সব খাচ্ছে তাদের বেড়ে যায় এমনিতে তো অ্যালকোহল ইজ নট এ গুড থিং টু কনজিউম এসপেশালি ইন লার্জ কোয়ান্টিটিস অ্যান্ড রেগুলার ড্রিঙ্কিং তো তাদের হয় তাদের এই দিস প্রবলেমস দে টেক অনেক কত লোক লিভার প্রবলেমস হয় বিকজ অফ দিস থিংস অনেক সময় ওষুধের জন্য হয় করোনাতে লিভার প্রবলেমস হয়ে যায় সো দের আর প্রবলেমস উইচ টেক প্লেস ওভার দে বলো আরো কোয়েশ্চেন আছে बोलो बोलो जिज्ञेस करते पर नो प्रॉब्लम फील फ्री यू पीपल मस्ट लर्न हाउ टू आस्क क्वेश्चंस ठीक है ये आस्ते आस्ते सेमिस्टारे ते तुम्हारा चेष्टा करो कि भाव प्रश्न करते हैं यो कर ले क्या तुम्हारे तो डायरेक्ट लाइव क्लसेस हाँ तुम्हारे मुखगुलो देखते पासी ना हमें और मुखगुलो जदि ना देखते पाई इफ आई कान सी यर फेसेस प्रपारलि then uh, i really cannot understand whether it is whether you are sleeping or whether you are standing or whether things have gone otherwise if you are in the class i can see your eyes and immediately i'll understand w- what has happened whether you have understood or you have not understood so you people must take some action and you must tell yourself whether uh, uh, you are able to understand or not okay to, uh, to i will w- won't be able to take tomorrow's class i will take it day after tomorrow okay golgi ka complex because i will not find time tomorrow i will inform you in the uh, so you people can enter directly because i have added you, you have the, uh, the in the link so you can enter directly like you have entered today most of you it's very nice so there is no least disturbance but everybody has got a proper attendance this is a very good attendance uh, after so many days i'm seeing a uh, uh, over uh, 25 26 attendance 
भलो कर ओके देन आई एंड माय क्लास टुडे आई विल टेल यू द नेक्स्ट क्लास डे आफ्टर टुमारो पॉसिबली आई विल टेक योर क्लास ठीक है ओके आई विल सेंड यू द लिंक